I wanna sing these fucking songs so I can finish this fucking record. What's left to do? Lots. So Jenna has to do vocals for two songs. I have to do backups for, I think, four songs. Um, and she wants to do, or she needs to do an acoustic song. I feel anxious, but it's gonna be fine. There's no option but for it to be fine. It has to be fine. There's no, there's no other option. Because when we leave today, we ain't coming back. <laughs> Are we going? Okay. <laughs> Any morning pizza? Yeah, this is a good start. <laughs> good start. I'm Jenna Priestner. I play guitar and sing in the band Mobina Galore. My name is Marcia Hansen, and I play drums and I sing backup vocals. Mobina Galore started in uh, around 2011, 2012. We're starting at the beginning here. <laughs> um, Jen and I met about 10 years ago when we were both living in Fernie, BC. And we started the band there. We started playing music in her house. She had a full jam room set up with like guitars and keyboards and drums and microphones and everything. And I'd never seen all of that stuff in somebody's like house before. <laughs> just come home from the bar late night and just jam. After like a few jams, we were like, should we just like start a band? And it was a very exciting idea. We're like, oh my God, we're starting a band. And Mobina Galore evolved from that band. And then we just kept playing, just the two of us. Yeah, it was never a conscious decision. That's just what it was. I think it's like it. I got a girl whose ass won't quit. I think she's a winner. She's making me dinner. She says, I look fat, but I think I look thinner. Hair and sticks and assorted dips. I'd rather eat cheese on chips. One, two, three, four, five. I don't count when I'm feeling the vibe. Cheddar, mozzarella, cheese curds, too. I just want to melt all of you. I don't discriminate when I'm filling my plate. Even like the whiz that people hate. What about dessert? I want cheesecake. Cheese sauce on top. Don't care if it's fake. So many tasty treats, I can barely move. I swear I got shoes. I swear I got shoes. <laughs> we spend a lot of time together, for sure. There's no way I'm going to think this is as cute as you do. You know, yeah, touring and uh, being in a relationship and living together and sometimes working together, uh, just uh, outside of band working together. And I think that it's just all we know. It, it is all we know, actually. We started dating and started this band at the same time, basically. And then the next thing, I'm like, hey, I booked us a tour. And Mars was kind of like, okay, like we just kind of went with it and see where it would take us.
so yeah, we started out in Fernie and then Marcy is uh, from Winnipeg, so we moved back to Winnipeg. This is actually the perfect time to be in the studio. Because then we don't have to be every time of year? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm born and raised here, and my sister was due with her first baby, and we were all very excited. A week before I was supposed to come home, I got the call from my mom that I gotta come home right now. My dad got in an accident, and he had a cardiac arrest. Jenna came with me, and we just got on a plane like two hours later, and we're home in Winnipeg that night. My dad passed away from that cardiac arrest and my niece was born at the exact same time. So it was like the worst time of our lives and a very joyous time. But Jenna was always like trying to book shows and trying to get me back into it and like, you'll feel better. Just like, like let's just like start playing shows again and let's start practicing again. And, and you know, after a few months we did and and it was just a really easy to get into the Winnipeg scene. We, we loved it just from the get-go. All right, here we are. It's official. How are you? Good. Hi, Vanessa. How's it going? When we first moved here, we were looking to record our our album, Cities Away. We had like a list of a few different producers. I didn't know where they were from at first. Jenna just started like reading the backs of a bunch of her favorite CDs to see where they were recorded. And looked at Propagandy's album and saw that, oh, this one is recorded at a place called Private Ear in Winnipeg. Started Googling them. I'm like, John Paul Peters, Winnipeg. And then we got in touch with JP and met him and, holy oh, shit, this is amazing. Here we are, we're doing our third album with him. It's like my favorite people in the world. I don't know, he fits really well into into the mold of the band each time we we come in here. It's just comfortable. I think both Marcy and I, we like to be in a comfortable environment when it comes to recording because it is, you're in a very vulnerable position when you're recording, right? Sounds good. Because then then you're not worrying about, you don't have to, we can we can keep Marcia's vibe alive. Like yeah. when she's ready to rock. Yeah. We don't have to worry about like being in perfect tune or. Yeah, right. You can focus yeah, on the energy of the track, not mm -hmm. thinking about, I'm recording this for my album. Yeah. And then so I when we first the came into the <laughs> studio to do Cities Away, I was just very nervous and I felt very self-conscious and, over the last, you know, seven years, I've gotten a lot more comfortable just like with myself playing music. And we were here for our last album, feeling disconnected, and I felt 10 times more comfortable just dealing with JP and being in the same familiar surroundings. And, and now it feels like a second home. Just use this kind of thing. I don't know how he hears what he hears, but I know that he does it right because he makes things sound great. Ooh, these toms actually sound pretty good. I prefer to get started with the drum track if it's early on in the recording process. Okay. Denim to denim? Denim on denim. On denim. Let's go. So we've got the studio booked for 13 days, I believe. And we have 13 songs, so ideally it would kind of be a song a day. So there's just a lot of switch ups in this song, so I hope that I don't keep fucking it up. That's my hope. What kind of, uh, what kind of switch ups? I'll start a single snare beat and then I move to the tom, but only for like, you know, a couple bars and then I'm at the hi hats. So there's something for everyone in this song. Cool. <laughs> when am I coming in? So you're gonna do whatever you do and then I come in four beats later? Are you gonna leave four beats to start? Yeah. Or like, you know what, let's leave eight beats because it is a faster tempo. I'll just go okay. right into... Great. Okay. Um, favorite song? I really like this song called Denim on Denim. It's a really fun song. It was one of the, one of the ones that I wrote. Go figure. Jenna just mixed it up on guitar and then was like, hey, how about you try this drum beat? So she even thought of my drum beat, like da ba 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 And it turned it into this whole like kind of surfy, fun vibe. That's a long
long one. Let's see, it is long. Snare drum tone's just great for that song. Yeah? Cool. Yeah, you're playing like super relaxed and fluid. Awesome. Love it. Maybe could I come in and listen? Yep, please. I've never heard how this song sounds from in front of the drums without the click blasting, so. JP has so many amazing ideas because he listens to us in the live room, like tracking the drums, and he hears the song over and over and over and over again. And he has time to come up with really cool additional instrumentation. And I think that adds like a huge element to our record. Do you think a part like this might be a little bit more supported with that? Like, no, that totally makes sense. Yeah, yeah, let's try that. Oh, I like that. To be honest, I, I fucked it up this time. Okay. <laughs> I don't I don't usually give that space. I usually just keep the steady bass. So here usually I would have the space like da 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 oh. da da da. Okay, then forget all that. No, 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 but let's let's try what you said. Why don't we just run through that uh, what was that? Verse, verse two? 2 and then I'll try what JP said. And then I'll try it the way that I meant to do it. And then Or why don't you just do it the way you meant to do it? Sounds good. Don't do it the way I meant you to do it. <laughs> okay, can we try that second verse? All right, two bars, here we go. When I'm doing my drum tracks, it's a lot of me just trying not to get frustrated when JP tells me to do it. Just try it one more time for the 15th time when I know surely I'm gonna have to do it another 10 times. And he'll say, just one more time. And I'm like, you are lying to me. Let's do one more take. Take three. Okay, we'll go up in the same spot. Let's do one more take of like intro to end of first chorus. Can we just record just the fast part? Let's try it. Let's try it seven more times. <laughs> Here we go. Why denim on denim? I don't know. Just something about like the Canadian tuxedo. It's just, it's one of the lyrics. It's like, ooh, you, you're wearing the denim on denim. Nice. Ooh, look at that person's denim on denim. They're looking really good. Who's a bass? Who's a bass? Who's a bass? Is that me? Am I the bass? Jenna's a bass. When Jenna's tracking guitars, I like to leave the room because I don't hear a lot of like the guitar intricacies. Like I'm not, I don't have an ear for it. So it drives me crazy to just be in the room and they're like this, this, this. Mars, what do you think about this? I'm like, all this sounds the same to me. You guys gotta just pick one. Yeah, we just realized we like the scratch guitar tone on this song. Okay. And it was a scratch guitar tone that we put absolutely no thought into. We took a DeVille and I threw a 57 it. on it and that was like, I don't know, it sounded great. Where yeah. should I put it? Here. Right in front of here? Yeah, pointing out this way. Oh, you know why this tone sounded so good? It's an old Unidyne. It's the answer. I don't know what else we would do. I guess maybe <laughs> I will check. That's how you make a guitar tone. $110 mic on an amp, done. Every song on this record, we started from my classic tone, as we would call it, and then we would just add or remove pedals from the chain. Sometimes less is more, and then sometimes you just go crazy and use like 15 different pedals and three delays and like have the most fun ever. Let's hear what this tone sounds like. I was wondering if we should put the blues driver in too, but can you keep playing the part? All right, let's no, play the open chorus, yeah. Oh, that sounds great on the verse. It's awesome. There we go. I like it. Yep. You ready to make rock and roll history? My heart just went away. If 
thought, I thought maybe the first verse might have been a little rushy. What if you tighten it up just or play just a bit more gently for the bridge so that it has room to go? You're starting okay. with pretty oh, really yeah, loud. Yeah. What do you think? Mm. Yeah, works for All me. All right, that tone be done. Okay, what up next? Fans? We've got this uh, language that we speak that works. Yeah. His analogies of how to play a part better, how to how to sing something better. For whatever reason, he uses some strange, ob obscure ob analogy. It makes sense to me, and then I perform better. Yeah. Cool. The only time that you're really going to want to push that snare is you know when. <laughs> Fast beat on hats. Yeah. Just want to get that snare cracking down like uh, Thor's hammer. Shiza. Maybe you could bring up like a Sex in the City reference next time. That'll really hit home. Yeah. So, Mars in the, yeah. in the fast on beat on the fast hat part. Yeah. Can you bring it down like Samantha goes out on the town? Yeah. Oh, snap. <laughs> I know exactly what you mean by that. Sweet. I'm, I, we're speaking the same language. Okay. <laughs> this album, I came in thinking I'm going to be more patient. I'm going to be more willing to just charge through just no matter how many times I have to do something. doesn't matter if you have to do it a hundred times. Just if, if it's going to be better, it's not JP's fault that you're not doing it. And I feel like I've gotten better at it. I've only had one minor meltdown, I think. <laughs> Maybe two. <laughs> That's it! Mars, I'm punching that fill in. I try it again and again, and it gets worse and worse and worse, and then it just ends up with <laughs> something like that. Other, other than the rim job. <laughs> yeah, I heard, yeah, 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 I felt that rim. Let's try it. So now it sounded like you were playing drums. <laughs> Jenna kind of has to be there for the beginning of my drum parts because I'm drumming along to the songs on guitar. And until we get a scratch guitar down, I have to do it to her in the room. And I can tell sometimes she's like, okay, I've had quite enough of this. Can I go? My heart just went away. I'm bored. What? I said I'm bored. Go see the sunshine. You don't even need me for this anyway, do you? I don't know, can you just go? You're killing me here. You're miserable. Um, all right, back to my guitar <laughs> in the middle of the floor. <laughs> I think it's more work when we're in the studio. Like we're more just focused on like getting these songs done and talking to each other in, in a band way as opposed to talking to each other in a relationship way. Sorry, sorry, sorry. One more time, one more time. But if like one of us gets sick or something or is just really bummed out about not being able to get this fill or this guitar part or something, it's easy for us to just be like, hey babe, it's all good. Like you totally got this. You you know, kind of give someone that 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 pump up talk from a very sincere place. Ugh. Are you losing your mind? I don't know, I feel like I'm losing my mind, but I don't know why. I have no reason, reason to. Oh, mm -hmm. sorry. I was just getting really bored sitting in there, but I also knew I wasn't needed, so it was like a, right. I'm just gonna go, but I didn't wanna offend anyone by just leaving. And you guys <laughs> be like, um, where the fuck did Jenna go? And I'm like, oh, the espresso machine isn't working. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse so. me. Can I have everyone's attention? That's sounding great. I would like to listen to those. Cool. Come on in. Just went away. It's a song that I didn't want on to put on the record, to be honest. But Marcia loved and loves that song. There are a couple songs on this album that you wrote in this way, which is just kind of like conversational. Like you were just like writing down how you were feeling and then just started singing it and it sounds perfect. My heart just went away for a while. It's 
song about fucking up and moving on and hoping that you can just kind of put the past in the past. Yeah, sounding really good. Let's do California. California? Sounds California, great. bro. It was one of those, yeah, we gotta work on that song, we gotta work on that song. And then, you know, between tours and broken ankles, all of a sudden yeah. we're like, we have a lot of stuff to finish for these songs, and now we have studio time booked. Nobody's this picky. This Check. is this is Priestner picky, is what, what this is. You got the measuring tape out. Okay. Don't forget to set the mood on the way out. Oh yeah, set the mood. Half mood. What's California mood? We have to turn on all the lights. We've got fucking sun. Do we get some sand in here? <laughs> oh yeah, sand. Journeys? Is that too much to ask? <laughs> Two months ago, we had like three or four completely finished songs and everything else was like getting there. And then a month later, Excuse we've got me? 13 songs, but we've still got like bridge vocals and a couple parts bridge, that, were, that we're still unclear on. Vocals are... Hello. I kind of like that in the recording process. I like to, I guess I like to have some stuff still open because if you're too solidified in what you have going into the studio, then there's not really as much wiggle room. You ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Everyone I love has moved on. Nah. Unamale. Better sing with both of those. Get out of here. I've been moving around for so long. Take me back to California. Take. Sorry, I thought we were. I thought you said bridge out, so I thought we were before the bridge. Yeah. Let's go to the end here. This, those were great lines. Because we're a two piece, and it's always just the two of us going off of each other with parts, and there's no odd number of a bandmate to kind of make the final call on something. I think he just adds that that dynamic to decision making. <laughs> He's basically like a third member of our band when, when we come into the studio. And also, I don't really know, like sometimes I sing it the same twice and sometimes I sing it different the second time and blah, blah, blah. Thoughts? It's a you punk and rock tune. I'm not gonna think too much about it unless Marcia wants to defer. Didn't, didn't I like what you're doing. I do like it when you sing it differently both times. Okay. Whatever you just did there was yeah. totally awesome. Okay, I'll do that. Comping all the vocals together takes a bit of time. You gotta listen to every every take you did and pick the best. But this time is actually has been a quicker process. I think all of us are being less picky about it. In addition to the performances being better this time around. Ooh, yamza. <laughs> <laughs> or? But there are some songs where, like, you really do have to listen and, like, find the perfect heart and, like, the perfect emotional performance in it. So sometimes that can take a while. All right, well, you guys choose. I'm going to go make an unnecessary espresso. <laughs> oh, my God, there's not nearly enough in here. Whatever. I'm just bored. Like they, for some reason, don't like, they don't feel like our songs. Cause I don't know, it's like, I feel like kind of like this weird disconnection from them at this point in the recording process. When I mean, usually I'm like, it, we're just like this one big circle of songs and band. And maybe it's just because we've got so many things going on right now, I haven't like fully embraced them all yet to the extent that I normally have. So it's kind of, I'm, I have like a weird, I have like a weird relationship with them right now that we're like still in the early stages. We've never come into the studio with so many songs, so it's fine. I hit the goalposts. You did? No, I didn't. I was right. way off. I've been moving around for so long.
Fox. Cool, cool, cool. Very happy. Being a few days in to recording and having, you know, 10 things checked off your list of 300 things to get done, but still having so much to do is a funny feeling. You just have to take it one thing at a time and, and know that you will get through it and you're not in it alone. And everybody here in the studio is here for the same reason and it's to get all those checks on the board. Days go by pretty fast in the studio. We'll be here by around 9.30 or 10. Yeah, about 10, 12 hour days where we're hanging around and then go home for midnight, go to sleep, wake up, make a pot of coffee and back in the studio. At the same time, you're like in this weird vortex with like no windows and you never know what time it is and you blink and the 12 days is over and you have an album. I think you hit a wall almost on a daily basis in a sense in the studio. Like you want to just push through and you kind of just push through in any way you can. And that last song I had to just like stop doing, I just, that song is super fresh that I just like don't hear my voice in it yet. And will I find my voice in it? I have no idea. It can be very stressful to know whether or not you are going to get everything done because we don't really have a choice but to get everything done. Yeah. You need to practice for tour. You need to practice for tour. <laughs> We're not even playing these songs on tour because nobody knows these songs. This album isn't finished yet. Five songs in one day. And then we've got your backing vocals to do. We've got some gang vocals to do. If we could get even 10 done by the end of tomorrow, that'd be incredible. Well, we did five today. That was my goal. I would like to do five tomorrow if I could. So if I'm done all my vocals on Monday, then I have Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday to give my voice a rest before tour, slash practice all the songs we're playing on tour. We'll get everything done. It's just a matter of like, kind of losing steam a little bit, in a sense. Yeah. Like, my vocals need to be done. Yeah. I wanted to have them finished on Friday, but I know that that was, that wasn't exactly. Realistic. Realistic. We didn't want to have to be here till like 9 p.m., 10 p.m. tonight. So we could go home and practice, but that's okay. Tis what it is, tisn't it? Tis what it is, <laughs> tisn't it? <laughs> Uh, what so tunage would you like to do? Me. Oh, Irene, please. Loading it up. Oh, Irene is a song that I wrote for my grandma, and it was originally inspired by my dad. He had asked us to, like, maybe write a letter that he could read to her. It, like, it was one of those things where I wasn't able to go see her. So instead of writing a letter, I wrote this song. Jenna just made hers a song because that's what she does and it's gorgeous and I love it. I'm supposed to write you a letter. I hope that it makes you feel better. You're still in bed. You might not wake up. You might not get another night's sleep. So I was simply let you know. I was tr really trying to create that like mind space of, of just sitting there and just being sad and like sitting in her bed and writing, just having all these different emotions and trying to put all that into this vocal performance. It's like, I just need to not try, try hard singing. I just need to kind of like talk, sing the words almost. And I kept- I actually wonder if you might, you might actually want to sing it and not talk it. Yeah? I wonder if we want to try the opposite, but I think 
when we when we just do those. Because like <clears throat> to me, uh, chorus two and last chorus was like done. Mm -hmm. How did you feel? There becomes a different language that you speak to each other when you're in the studio. When it's a song that has more of a personal meaning to it, I can tell that JP and even like Marcia will have criticism and, a, and give me criticism in a different way. Now think like for the verses, just long and smooth, like na 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 na, instead of the talking approach. I'm not sure, like, you know what? Go with your gut feeling on it. I'm gonna shut up. Me? Lock into like what you lock into. What whatever. you're doing sounds yeah. great. I liked that <clears throat> talking. Being in the vocal booth, it's nice to have Mars there. I think it's the time when we most benefit from each other being like very engaged and active in the process of it. There's just something about the two of us being very hands-on in each other's vocal performances that really elevates the songs to the next level. And yeah, that's why it's a lot nicer to be in this process with somebody that you're comfortable with. <laughs> the things you find funny on tour are pretty, 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 pretty bad. <laughs> That was huge. That's good, eh? <laughs> Holy shit. That was the take. It was great. Yeah, that felt good. Oh, really, man. Really. So impacting. I feel like we vibe pretty well in the studio, especially with vocals. We help each other out a lot. Like, we know more how the other wants to sound with their vocals than somebody else would, you know? Did you want me to do longer ones, Jenna? I guess I kind of hear that, or maybe that's what you, you did before. I like that third one that she did. Like when she like physically backs away from the microphone. You always it kind of trails off. I think Marcy, you should just do it like the aerial voice. Don't try to, in my opinion, don't try to like grit it up or anything. Just be nice and like. <laughs> I can try this. That just came naturally, whatever it happened. Could you try a harmony in the chorus? That's very different. Oh, something yeah. like that. Um, I would just love to hear it. Sure. That's epic. Ursula is taking her voice from her as she sings. I said, Ursula is taking her voice from her as she sings and she's <laughs> sucking it into her own soul. <laughs> if we had two more months to finish this album, I honestly don't know how much further we would have made it. Like, we need that deadline. We need that time frame of like, okay, we've got all of the month of December, all the month of January to figure this out. You have that list and you know you have all the time in the world to get it done and then all of a sudden you're on the last day and it feels like that list has not gotten any smaller. Today's the last day, leaving for tour right away. There's a lot to do and I want to go home and sleep. Maybe I'll just come in at the top of the first chorus. Boom. Yeah. I wouldn't do anything. Hold those long. Yeah, just a little bigger. We could put some delay on the bass there. It might be cool. Why didn't we rehearse this morning when this got pushed back? I'm like kicking myself for only thinking of that now. Well, yesterday we practiced once for the tour and 
at the same time, we're, we're supposed to be listening to these board mixes to come up with some more backup vocals and stuff. So it's kind of like, what's the priority? And obviously the priority is the studio because that's what comes first, but we still needed to do both. Hula hoop. Slowly going hula, crazy. Hula hoop, hula hula hoop. Cheer up, chum. I wouldn't say I'm not cheerful. I'm just. Well, Note to self: Don't record an album right before you're going on a tour. That's one thing to learn from this all, everybody. <laughs> I wrote this one uh, for my grandma. It's called The Wedding. Finishing an album is a really funny feeling because it's this thing that you've been working on before you even knew you were working on it, you know, like you're just like in the jam room and then you end up coming up with a song and then you like that song and then all of a sudden that's happened 12 times and you have 12 songs and you're like, oh, like maybe we'll record this album. And then you have this this finished product and and it and you just hope you hope that you love it. Don't Worry came to me quite early on. We were very emotional when we were writing a lot of these songs. And both kind of going through shitty times and heartbreak. It was like, I know these songs sound like I'm going through a hell of a time, but I just want you to know I'm fine. Yeah. Don't worry. I think it's just the perfect title to group all of these songs together.
When you finish the record, it's not even the beginning of anything because you still have so much yeah. you other wake up stuff just thinking, to do. Now what? Well, exactly. That's exactly <laughs> it. Now what? I hope that this is always what I'm doing. It still blows my mind that we've been doing this together since we met each other. And I feel like in some capacity, we'll always be doing this. What do you think, Mars? <laughs> if I book a tour, you'll be there, right? <laughs> Just like how it all started? Yeah. <laughs> Beta 57. Sorry, Beta 58. Happy to be This is how I'm interested in Mars is. Do you guys mind if I soup quick just confirm my reservation in Segovia tomorrow? <laughs> I care about you and I care about things that you care about. I was just thinking today, Mars, we should buy some stocks and something. Maybe it's got some stocks. Costco? You should buy stocks in, in uh, my new company that rents video cameras. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. We're, I think we're in, right, Jeff? Sold. So figure out where I belong. I know I need to go home, but I have destroyed everything. Yes! That's awesome!